Hey there, Norman here from WellCode, and today we're going to be discussing the Video Scroll Motion Widget. This widget displays video that is fully controlled by the user scrolling on the page. This means the video can be played forward, backward, slow, or fast, all by the mouse wheel or a swipe on the trackpad. This effect appeared on the Apple website a while back and became fairly sought after, but it's not easy to pull off and generally requires some fancy coding. And in some methods, the video had to be separated down to individual still frames. But our widget makes it very easy and is designed to work simply with a piece of video. Let's jump into the builder and take a look at how this widget works and how we can set that up. For our theme here, I have the photography theme shutter, and I'm going to go down below this more than reality text a little bit down the page, and I'm going to add our widget into a blank row. Just going to drag and drop the widget here. Perfect. Now, one note on page placement. This widget works great as a hero. However, you'll want to consider the widget's functionality for a moment. The video is controlled by scrolling down the page, so if you're using this as a hero, you may want to place a scroll icon as a prompt so that people know to scroll down the page. Otherwise, they may think that there's a video loading and may not realize that there's more content lower on the page. By using the widget lower on the page, the interaction is more intuitive and the user will land on the widget while they're already scrolling. And it will be instantly obvious that they're in control of the video frames. So let's open the widget panel here and look at the options. The first option that you're going to see here on the list is the unique ID option. You'll need to use a unique ID if you're using more than one instance of the widget on the same page. We'll be okay with just leaving this as default for the demo, however. And just below that, we have the media stream URL. This is a URL for our hosted video. Now, speaking of hosted videos, this is a great time to discuss video hosting. You'll see we have three options for adding your video. We have the media stream URL, we have the upload video, and we have the streaming platform such as YouTube, Vimeo, and Dailymotion. However, we very strongly suggest using the media streaming URL, which utilizes our media drive service. The reason for this is that this widget relies on the video to be properly optimized for smooth frame-by-frame -frame display. And by using the media drive, we can bypass the automatic video compression process that's applied with the upload video and streaming platform options. To explain this a little further, let's look at each option. When you use the upload video option, the builder will automatically optimize the video. And this is great in most cases because it will reduce the file size and the result is a better overall video playback and page load speeds. The problem is the video scroll motion widget requires videos to be optimized for frame by frame scrubbing, which is different from standard video playback. So the automatic optimization done by the builder is not ideal in this case. Similarly, when using YouTube, Vimeo, or daily motion videos, we have the same type of situation. Each of these platforms optimizes videos for their service, which is not ideal for our frame-by-frame -frame use case. If you're not familiar with our Media Drive service, it was designed and built with this exact type of use in mind. Images and videos are stored in Media Drive and are never altered in any way. That means that we can stream the video exactly as we intended. This makes it a great resource for photographers and other creatives that want to maintain control of their media. So to summarize, we've provided several options for adding your video, but you're likely going to have choppy results unless you use the media drive and the media stream URL option. Now before we load our video, we need to prepare it. As mentioned earlier, the video must be prepared in a very particular way in order to result in a smooth experience for the user. So we're going to use a great program called Handbrake. Let's go ahead and open up Handbrake's website right here and we can close this Apple website. 
Now Handbrake is a great little program. It's free, simple, it works with Mac, Windows, and Linux. I've already got that installed right here, so we're going to go ahead and open this. Now there's a lot of settings available here, but to make things even easier, we've created a preset for you to use. If you head over to our doc page and you scroll down until you locate the download section right here, you can find there's a link to Handbrake and there's also a link to download the preset for Handbrake. So once you have the preset downloaded, you may need to unpack it and unzip it from the zip file. Once you have that and you have the preset ready to go, we can open up Handbrake and then within Handbrake, we'll come up to the preset option. We'll come to import from file. We'll grab that preset. I already have it installed, but I'll go ahead and override that. Okay, now we have that installed. We can go ahead and add our video. I'll just drag and drop my video into Handbrake. Now that the video is in Handbrake, we want to go to our presets and make sure that we have our custom preset of video scroll motion widget selected. From there, we'll jump down to the bottom here, and I want to make sure that I have the correct file location. And then at the end of the file name, I want to add optimized, just to help keep everything organized. Okay, now I can go ahead and click start encode. And it's done. So we can go jump into the folder and take a look. We have our original, which is 9 megabits, 9.45 megabits, and we have our new video, which is 2 megabits. And it's been fully optimized and ready to go for the video scroll motion widget. So next, we want to jump into Media Drive and take a look at how we upload and add this video into Media Drive. We can close that, open up the browser, and then if we open up Media Drive, which I have at a new tab here, we can click this upload file button. Now we can just grab our optimized video, drag and drop that right into Media Drive, and that's going to go ahead and upload. And then finally, we'll just copy the streaming link, which is this copy link button here. Now keep in mind that other hosting services like Dropbox are not going to work for this because they're intended for long-term file storage and not media streaming. When you copy a file link in Media Drive, it is a direct link to that photo or video. If you attempted this in Dropbox or any other file hosting platform, you would not get a direct link. You could test this by simply pasting the link into a browser, and a direct link like the Media Drive link will pull up the actual video and display it in the browser. A Dropbox link will usually pull up a login screen or menu. Now back to the widget. We're going to go back into the builder here and we're just going to paste that URL into the media stream URL section and essentially this widget is good to go. However, we're still going to go over a few more details. If we jump to the bottom of this widget here, we'll have a few more options to go over. The first one in that list is going to be the video length option. This determines the length or portion of the video that will be shown in the video scroll motion. The value used here does not have to match the length of the video. However, you must use a value here that is equal to or less than the length of the video you're using. Our video is four seconds long, so we'll go ahead and put four in the field here. You may see an error message like this. You can go ahead and just ignore that. Press enter again and it should go away. Just below that, we've got our scroll offset. This is to offset the page position in which the video motion begins. This is useful for if the video begins scrolling sooner or later than you'd like, or if you need to account for your site's header. Negative values may be used, and in other words, you can put a negative number in there. Below that, we have our Enable Overlay option. You may use a color or image overlay. Color overlays help to stylize a video or match a brand, while transparent PNG grids can be used to improve the look of a low resolution video. I'll cover this a little bit more in a minute when we get to the design section. And below this, we have the enable title and or description. You can use this to display a title, description, or both. We'll leave this off for this example. 
And the last thing in the panel is the Enable Text Fade. This feature creates a fade of a title and description text as the user scrolls. Let's go ahead and republish this site and take a look at how it looks. From here, we can open up our site and scroll down and we'll see that as we scroll, this video is responding nicely. If we go back up, it reverses. If we go down, it moves forward. Okay, now we need to jump back in and take a look at the design options in the design tab for this widget. If I open the design section, you can see we've got a lot more options in here. There are stylings for the title and description and the normal animations and spacing settings and all kinds of stylings. I'm not going to cover all of these individual settings because everything's pretty self-explanatory in here, but I did want to briefly discuss the overlays. As mentioned earlier, when an overlay is enabled, you can customize it here. We can set a color to stylize the video a bit, or we can click the image tab and load an image. It's important to point out that this is intended to be used with transparent PNG images. There's a trick that's long been used on the web to account for low resolution video. By placing a grid or pattern overlay on top of the video, it makes the apparent quality of the video improve. Since the video we use on the web usually has to be highly compressed to load in a reasonable time, this helps to hide the artifacts of compression. This isn't a requirement at all, but if you find that you don't like the look of the video when it's compressed, try using a PNG overlay image. You can find them on the web by searching for PNG overlays or PNG video overlays. Lastly, we see that we can control the opacity of the overlay as well. Now, before we wrap this up, I want to offer a couple tips for choosing and preparing your video. The first is watch your file size. We've discussed file size quite a bit already, but this is important because large video files will cause poor performance. When using the handbrake preset we provided, you should be in pretty good shape. You want to aim for between 2 to 4 megabytes per video. The next is use shorter videos. This widget is intended more as an effect than as a way of displaying a normal informative video. By sticking with shorter videos, it will be more fun for the user to play with the video and it will keep the page length from becoming excessively large. Next, trim videos. You may notice that video length setting in the widget option. This does not trim your video. This setting simply controls the amount of the video that the widget will show. Try to match this setting with the length of the video. Next, you want to avoid slow motion. Lots of shorter, dramatic videos you might be tempted to use are slow motion. Slow motion videos are less ideal for this use case because a user will be controlling the speed of the video scrubbing. And normal speed videos will often have a slow motion feel when used in this way. So slow motion can feel too slow. Lastly, use Media Drive. Portions of this video may have felt like a commercial for Media Drive, but the truth is we've built Media Drive because it solves a big problem. We've been making galleries and video players for many years, and the hosting questions come up over and over and over again. We've written blog articles suggesting services that have closed down and hacky solutions for using file hosting services like Dropbox in ways that they, they were never intended for. But this is exactly what Media Drive is built for, and it works great. So utilize it. That being said, we've included other options for adding videos, and you're free to use them. But Media Drive is just the right tool for the right job in this case. We have lots of training on Media Drive if you'd like to check that out in our doc. However, as for this video, that's going to do it for us. As always, my name is Norma Durkee, and you are rocking with the best website builder platform on the planet, wocode.com, and we'll see you on the next one.